Within this series of videos, you'll learn about behavioral assessments for obesity risk factors. We'll also discuss how to incorporate these behavioral assessments into our development of treatment plans for individuals in need of support. This video will focus on our second learning objective, which is to identify the strengths and limitations of different measures of physical activity. Sometimes more comprehensive assessments don't provide great detail on the behaviors we are most interested in understanding. In this case, we can augment our comprehensive assessment approaches with more targeted assessment strategies. Methods to assess physical activity and sedentary behavior can be objective, meaning we are directly measuring activity, or subjective, meaning the patient is reporting their activity. Objective measures include pedometers, accelerometers, heart rate monitors, and direct observation, and subjective measures include questionnaires, logs, and diaries. Pedometers provide us with basic step count data. An advantage of this measure is that it is cheap and easy to use, but pedometers only provide data on steps and not other dimensions of movement and can have questionable reliability and validity. We also know that they are less accurate for certain activities such as running, cycling, and water activities, and they can be less accurate for special populations. Accelerometers provide higher quality data on both distance and intensity of movement. Nowadays, most people already have accelerometers in their mobile devices, Apple Watches, and Fitbits, and these data can be used for assessment purposes. Accelerometers can also provide sleep data and work well for all ages. However, accelerometers can be more expensive and can produce large volumes of data that can be difficult to manage and interpret. They are also less accurate and useful for cycling and water activities. Heart rate monitors can produce high quality exercise intensity data and can be used in multiple settings. However, heart rate monitors have similar disadvantages as accelerometers in that they can be more expensive and can produce large volumes of data that can be difficult to manage and interpret. Because emotional reactivity can influence heart rate, some of the data collected may be biased if you're trying to measure low intensity physical activity. Direct observation can be used to directly observe patients engaging in activities. This affords more flexibility in documenting numerous dimensions of the frequency, intensity, time, and type of exercise, and allows you to tailor your observation to your needs. However, direct observation can be very expensive because it can take a lot of time to pay and train coders to code reliably. It can also produce a lot of data that may be difficult to manage and interpret. Finally, patients may alter their behavior if they know they are being observed. Some examples of physical activity questionnaires include the ACT24 recall instrument, the International Physical Activity Questionnaire, and the NHANES Physical Activity Questionnaire. Many of these questionnaires ask respondents to self-report the time spent in moderate physical activity, in vigorous physical activity, sitting, and other behaviors. Questionnaires are cheap and they're easy to administer to many people at once. They can be appropriate for estimating prevalence of physical activity in a population, especially when you don't need extremely precise data. However, they are susceptible to reporting bias due to inaccurate time estimation, memory failures, or desirability bias, where people are reporting what they think you want to hear. They also may not provide you with the detail you need to see changes in response to interventions. Finally, participants can keep a log or diary of their different activities and their sedentary behaviors. This approach is also cheap and easy to administer to many people at once and is appropriate for highly motivated patients because they will actually take the time to give you good data because they know it will benefit them. However, logs and diaries are susceptible to reporting bias due to inaccurate time estimation, memory failures, or social desirability bias. They also may not provide you with the detail you need to see changes in response to interventions. As reviewed in this video, you have many ways to assess physical activity and sedentary behavior. Your choice of methodology should match your setting and your data needs. If you are working with individuals or in clinical settings, you may have the ability to apply more robust and precise methods, such as heart rate monitors, direct observation, and accelerometers. In intervention programs, research studies, or population monitoring efforts, some combination of objective and subjective measures, or just subjective measures, may better fit the resources and data needs you have. In some situations, highly precise data are not needed, 
So just obtaining good enough data to determine general patterns can be the right fit for your time and resources. In other situations, extremely precise data is needed and is worth the extra time and expense. So as our number of participants increase from small to large, our ability to apply more expensive and objective measures typically decreases. In addition, as our resources increase from low to high, as does our ability to invest in more expensive and higher quality measures of physical activity. Let's wrap up with some key takeaways. There are many objective and subjective ways to assess physical activity within the context of obesity prevention and treatment. Each assessment approach has advantages and disadvantages. Ultimately, your choice of assessment should match your setting and data needs. That's all for this video. Thank you for learning with me.